We've all had the experience when we're asleep of finding ourselves in a dream. And for a while, believing that what's happening in the dream is real. And then something alerts us, something's wrong with the dream. And finally alerts us to the fact that we are dreaming. And usually that's enough for us to wake up, to pull out of the dream. And that process is very similar to the way we create worlds and states for the mind during our waking life. Because our picture of the world around us is always partial. It's always stitched together out of little bits and pieces of what we've seen. And we have a sense of what makes sense. And as long as it makes sense and seems to be real, we'll, we're stuck in that state of mind. And then something strikes us as incongruous, doesn't fit with what's going on. We realize, oh, that was an imaginary world. And you pull out. And then you're in another world, which may be better and may not. It's that ability to recognize what's incongruous and what's wrong with the world. That's an important skill, because without it we get stuck in states of mind, what the Buddha called bhava, or becoming where we can really suffer very intently. We focus on certain things in the world around us, certain things, ideas about who we are in that world, and everything else gets filtered through that particular picture. Other people's actions get filtered through that idea. So someone acting with you know, perfectly good intentions may seem to be evil, sneaky, unreliable, or vice versa. They actually may be evil, sneaky, and unreliable, and we see them as being perfectly reasonable, perfectly trustworthy. And yet the world in a, that we inhabit has its own inner coherence, which makes us think that it's real. So we have to watch out for this. Now, in a healthy mind, it's easy to switch from one world to another to recognize the incongruities. So that one state of becoming can actually pull you out of a less healthy state of becoming. There's a certain fluidity. The fluidity comes from your mindfulness, your ability to realize, okay, you take on different identities and you inhabit different worlds. And some are more useful than others, some are more beneficial than others. And if you're skillful, you can adopt whichever state of becoming seems to be the healthiest at that particular time, given those particular circumstances, what you want to do. The people who have problems are the ones who can't get out. They get stuck in a particular thought world, and everything gets interpreted in that way. And they can really do themselves a lot of damage. Because there's no porousness between the different states of becoming. There's no connection. Either you're in it or you're out of it. And the different identities that you take on, the different worlds you inhabit, seem to be very radically separate. And usually for people who are stuck in a very unhealthy state like that, they feel their only hope is some outside power. This is why so many programs that deal with addictions rely on the idea of an outside power. People get stuck in a particular idea of who they are, the world they're in, what they're capable of, what they're not capable of. And given the definitions of their little worlds, they need somebody from outside to come in, straighten them out. This comes from having a very fixed sense of who they are. And getting thoroughly trapped in it. One of the purposes of the meditations is to get you out of the trap. So 
that you realize that you do have many different identities and you do inhabit different worlds. And they can best be used as tools, realizing that no world that you inhabit is totally real or totally accurate idea of the where you are, your surroundings outside and also what's going on inside. William James made a, a lot of this point, and our idea, our idea of truth is pretty sketchy. How could you possibly know the total truth of the situation in which you are? The mind lives by its sketches. And recognize that is a useful step. It's okay, this sketch that I'm living with, is it a useful sketch? Is it helpful? You may have certain true details here and there, but you have to realize that no idea of your surroundings is going to be totally adequate. So in learning how to pull yourself out of unhealthy word, worlds first requires an understanding of how the mind creates these worlds, and then a development of the skills you need to move fluidly between them. Both of these skills are developed in meditation. In other words, an understanding of creating a world comes from we're trying to create a world of concentration right here, inhabiting your body, staying with your breath. Having a focal point. This is a lot of what the world is these worlds are built around, is you have a focal point and you have a desire. In this case, you're going to stick with that focal point, which is the breath. And your desire is to stay there as continually as possible. And then you want to learn how to evaluate it to see how well you're doing. For some people, this particular part is also difficult because they're used to negative judgments. They start berating themselves for not being good meditators or being hopeless. This is why it's useful to think about all beings, as we do before we meditate every time. May all beings be happy. And you look at, think a minute about all beings in the world. And one of the things you realize when you think about all beings is that very few people out there really can get their minds concentrated, or even want to try. The fact that you're trying is. That's a step in the right direction right there. And then you can also think about all the people in the past who've been meditating. It's not that everybody sat down and, as I say in Thailand, it was, had it as easy as peeling a banana. Everybody's had to fight to get the mind to settle down. So if you find yourself having trouble, take heart. You're not the only one. Everybody has problems with meditation at one point or another. Even the people who in this lifetime seem to be natural meditators, they had to have some point in the past where they had difficulties, because it goes against the grain. So when you learn how to think in those ways, then it's a lot easier to evaluate what you're doing and not berate yourself. In other words, look simply in terms of cause and effect and take your idea of who you are out of the picture for the time being. Just focus on your ability to stay with the breath. Notice what pulls you off and see if you can be quick in coming back. And when you come back, don't berate yourself. Take pride in the fact that you caught yourself. When you come back, try to come back in a way that's deft, skillful. That gives you practice in slipping back into a skillful state of mind from an unskillful one. It also develops your mindfulness. It's the mindfulness that creates the bridges between these different states that we get into. You remember, you were in one state and now you're in another. 
And the possibility of slipping back into another distracted state is always there, so you've got to keep on top of things to watch for any signs of how does the mind slip away. It has its tricks. It has its slight moments of blanking out, and then you find yourself in another world. Well, if you can use mindfulness as a bridge across that blanking out, then it's a lot easier to slip from one state of being and another when you want to. And it's a lot easier to stay in a state of being that you want to stay in. These are all very important skills, because they also help in learning how to recognize when you're in an unhealthy state. You can ask yourself, okay, is there suffering here? Does there have to be this suffering? And part of the mind will say yes, and you have to learn how to question it. It is possible to be in another state of mind. Just because a feeling or a thought arises in the mind doesn't, realize, doesn't mean that you have to go with it or that the feeling is genuinely you. Because remember, who you are has to be put into quotes. And you can make a sense of you around anything. So just because there's a feeling there doesn't mean it has to be the, the focal point of your sense of who you are. Because many feelings that come into the mind are actually destructive. This is why meditation is such an important skill in keeping the mind healthy. The mindfulness allows you to recognize when you've slipped from one state of bhava or becoming to another, one sense of who you are to another, one sense of what's going on in the world to another. It also helps you to remember, okay, there are these standards for judging a particular state of mind, even though a state of mind may have certain features which are very true. You can go out and you can verify it by looking at things outside. Yes, this situation really is difficult, or whatever it is that you've focused on. But then you ask yourself, do you have to suffer around this? And the Buddha's answer is always, no, you don't have to suffer. If you're suffering around a particular situation, okay, there, you're not approaching it in a skillful way, because this is the opportunity. He says, we always have this potential not to suffer. So keep that in mind, and then learn how to use the skills of meditation to pull yourself out of an unskillful state and create another one in its place, one that's more beneficial and one that's more useful, one that's healthier. Some people say you're running away, but what are you running away from? You're running away from one imaginary world, or one created world into another created world. A created world that's based on mindfulness and concentration, your ability to discern the causes of suffering. That's a much more useful world. That has potential. It can eventually lead you away from suffering entirely. So when you find yourself in a situation where it seems really difficult and you're just spinning around and around and around. Trying to look for that point of incongruity. Something's wrong here. Something's not right. And what's wrong is there's suffering, and it doesn't have to be. You can pull yourself out through that. Use the breath as a way of getting out. Remember being with a John Fung. You'd have students who get themselves in really strange states of mind through their concentration. And the road out was always, okay, where is your breath right now? Is the breath comfortable? And that would gradually pull you into the world of the breath. In other words, you inhabit the body from within. And this way you don't need an outside power. 
your own ability to recognize, well, there's something wrong here, and I can get out. And there's something wrong, as I said, is the fact that there's suffering, there's some stress. Something is creating a burden on the mind, and there doesn't have to be that burden. And you don't need an outside power. You just need to remember that you have the ability to create a different sense of who you are and to create a different world that you inhabit, one that's healthier. The ultimate goal of the practice, of course, is to be able to get out of all these worlds. That's what it really means to wake up. But in the meantime, you can have your little awakening when you wake up in the middle of one of your created worlds say, oh, this is suffering. It doesn't have to be here. And you look in the right place. Instead of placing the blame on other people, placing the blame on who, whatever, people in the past, people in the present, the suffering doesn't come from them. The suffering comes from the way the mind thinks about things. It creates impossible situations and then burdens itself with them. It doesn't have to do that. Mindfulness, concentration, and discernment form, form the way out. And those aren't just vague abstractions. Mindfulness is the ability to keep your awareness clear as you move from one state of mind to another. Alertness is the ability to see, oh, I'm doing something that's causing suffering. And discernment is what reminds you it doesn't have to be that way. There's an alternative. So as we're sitting here, we're gaining practice and precisely the skills we need in order to keep our sanity. And to start exploring some of the mind's possibilities in terms of the different identities it can take on and the different worlds it can inhabit. It gives you a good, safe, healthy world to inhabit. So learn to appreciate this skill, because it's really important. It is your lifeline. Make the most of your opportunity to practice it.